The Tick Pods free. What are they? In this little box I have right here are my Bluetooth earbuds. When I open them up, much like you would with the AirPods, I've got two little earbuds inside. These are nice ones. They actually have noise isolation. They sit inside your ear canal versus the AirPods that sit outside the ear canal. So what are they? Like I said, Bluetooth headphones, when you buy them, what comes in the box? You get this case, the headphones, an extra set of, small, of tips, and then a lanyard you can attach to them. How does it work? You pair them to your phone just like any other set of Bluetooth headphones. You open up the case. As soon as this case opens, it turns them on. You go into your phone's Bluetooth settings and you say, hey, I want to connect to these headphones. As soon as you do that, you're good to go and you can treat them just like any other set of Bluetooth headphones you've ever used. Be the El Cheapo ones you buy at Best Buy, fancy Bose ones, AirPods. They work just like all the rest of them. You can listen to music. You can take phone calls. It's fantastic. It's exactly what you'd expect. However, before you go too far, when you get your tick pods free, make sure you download, excuse me, download Mob Voice app because you can download a firmware update for these and install that. And you might want to do that before you start using them because it makes a world of difference in how well it works. So why did I support these? I talked about it back in episode 236. I'm living that dongle life now, guys. I got no headphone jack on my cell phone. So I went, it's time to start exploring some Bluetooth earbuds to make my life a little bit easier. I had some El Cheapo Bluetooth earbuds I was using just to tide me over. They were okay. These are a lot better. Why are they a lot better? Because on these headphones, I've actually got a lot of controls. You wouldn't think looking at this headphone, I've got a lot of controls, but I can do a lot of things because the back of this stock right here lets me do stuff. If I slide my finger up when I'm listening to music, it raises my volume. If I slide my finger down, the volume goes down on what I'm listening to. If I double tap this stock, it's going to skip a track. And on my left earbud, if I just hold my finger on top of that, it's going to pause whatever music I'm listening to. And on the right one, if I hold down, it's going to trigger my Google Assistant. Or if I'm on iOS, it's going to trigger Siri so that I can do whatever I need to do on that. So I've got a lot of capabilities just on the side of my earbud, which I found to be pretty convenient as I've played with these. I've been using these a lot lately whenever I go out Pokemon hunting or just taking a walk in the afternoon and I want to listen to music. I'll pop these bad boys in and I can listen to music. I can text people. I can make phone calls. It's super convenient. And what else is nice? These are IPX5 water and dust resistant, meaning you can wear them at the gym. You can go outside and take a jog when it's raining and they'll be perfectly fine. It's kind of nice in that regard. I'm not sure if the AirPods are any kind of IP certification associated with them. So I'm not sure if you could wear those in the rain or not. I forgot to check that before I did this segment, but fancy headphones, that's what they are. Now there might be some catches. What might some of those be? Well, you think it might be battery life. No, these things are rated to last four hours on a full charge, each of those cordless headphones. And I seem to do a little bit better than that. If I've been listening for about an hour and a half, I'm generally at about 75, 80% battery. So I haven't had a problem there. But they do quote themselves as saying four hours of battery life. Some of the other reviewers online have gotten five hours, but it's not really a problem because when you want to recharge them, you stick them back in this case it came with here and the case has 18 hours worth of charge in it. So you can keep charging these things up as you need to. And within about 15 minutes, you can get up to about 50% charge. So in most cases, you're good to go. So like I said, my use case. When I go to the grocery store, I put these on because I can be in my own little world. I can listen to music or podcasts or make phone calls. And they're small enough in my ears that people don't really notice. It's an easy way to listen to my music and not have to deal with people. That's the big thing. The music that comes out of them, it's pretty clear. There's minimal distortion and there's also really good sound isolation because like I showed on screen, these are headphones that sit in the ear canal, not outside of it. So that helps a lot. I end up using the swipe up and down on volume a lot when I'm in the store. If things get quiet, I'll turn it down a little bit so I can hear what's going on around me. One of the times that's become a problem is it's cold out right now. So I've been going out doing some walks outside when it's about 30, 40 degrees out. Well, you guys can see the top of my head. For those of you audio listeners, I'm pretty bald. It gets cold when I go outside. So I've been wearing a lot of beanies. Well, when you wear a beanie, none of those touch controls work through the beanie. That's the only problem. So you're sticking your finger up inside your beanie to do stuff if you want to. It looks a little weird, but not really a big issue. Some other stuff I found out, I was really concerned since these are earbuds that I'd have to worry about them falling out of my ear. It hasn't been a problem. I put the smaller tips on because they were uncomfortable at first. Once the smaller tips were in, I was really afraid they'd fall out of my ear. No, I can shake my head around. 
I can turn my head real fast. I have not had any of these come close to falling out of my ear. So that has not been a concern for me. However, comma, it could be a concern for someone else, depending on how your ears are, because everyone's ear canals are slightly different. Uh, one thing I have noticed, I was watching some Netflix on it at one point in time, slight delay between a mouth moving on screen and the Netflix and the sound rather coming across in the earbuds. But that's pretty common with Bluetooth speakers and stuff like that. Nothing that I really notice unless I'm actively looking for it. One thing I was concerned about is I have a lot of Bluetooth devices. Whenever I go out somewhere, I generally have at a minimum two devices connected because I have my watch connected. And then generally, if I'm out doing Pokemon stuff, I have my Pokemon Go Plus connected. So that's a minimum of two devices that I'm putting on a third device here to listen to music. I can have all three running. Haven't had a problem. So it's nice. I mentioned earlier I like to wear them in the store, though. The problem is people don't notice them in my ears. And a lot of people try to talk to me in the store, I've realized. And I don't notice half the time. So I kind of come off as an a-hole, I think, because I don't hear them because I'm listening to music or something like that. Or someone's talking to me and I kind of have to pause a second and pull one out of my ear and go, Wait, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? How is it's that really different weird. from normal? Oh, fair point. Fair point. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is this does have in-ear detection. So if you pull one out of your ear, it is going to pause your music, which is also kind of a nice feature. And when you pop the earbud back in, music starts back up again. So my experience has been pretty good with them. I haven't had a lot of problems. Where are some of the issues I've had? This is not a problem unique to the tick pods. I've had it with other Bluetooth headphones. Very occasionally, I'll get a slight audio dropout for like a half a second. There's a slight crackle. The volume drops really low. And then about a half second later, it comes back to normal. I've had this happen on other Bluetooth headphones. I'm not sure if it's the nature of the headphones or the Bluetooth radio in my phones, things like that. It's completely survivable. I'll go to the store. It'll happen once. And it kind of gives you pause for half a second. And then the music keeps going. You're like, oh. Okay, I'm I'm good to go. No I can vouch for this. I have a pair of wireless uh, Bluetooth headphones that I use when I mow the lawn, and I keep my phone in my left pocket. And when I mow, I mow against this brick wall now on my right side because I used to have it where my left side was up against this big rock wall retaining wall. And uh, every time I brought my left pocket near that wall, it would cut out exactly like you described. So I'm pretty sure it's a Bluetooth problem. Yeah, that, that was what I anticipated. A uh, couple other things I've run into. It takes a few seconds sometimes when you do the long press on the right one to get your Google Assistant or Siri to fire off. Sometimes you're sitting there. It's only supposed to take like a second or two. It'll take three to five seconds, it feels like. So you might look like a goof a little bit to people that are watching. Be like, what the hell is this guy doing holding his ear? And then eventually it goes and it's no problem at all. I can say from a Google Assistant standpoint, I was out doing uh, groceries today and I was picking up stuff at the store and I was texting back and forth with my fiance being like, did you want me to pick up this? Should I grab this? Not a problem at all sending uh, messages back and forth that way. And I've made phone calls on them with no problem either. People said I came through crystal clear. And the nice thing is with these headphones, the old set I had before, you'd only hear people talk in one ear. So it was only my right ear. I would hear the voices in before. With these ones, you get the people's voices in both ears. So that's a nice feature. I have not had that in some of the other Bluetooth headphones I've had in the past. Chris is hearing voices. I am. I hear voices all the time. <laughs> I think we need to report this. <laughs> you, you probably should. He might be a danger to himself or others. So while I really like the touch controls on the stems, you have to get used to it. You have to get habituated to it because if you double tap too high on the stem, it's not going to do anything. Or if you double tap too low, you need to be almost exactly in the center. So sometimes if I'm not thinking as I'm looking at something on the shelf, I'll double tap up high and I'll be like, why oh, did my track skip? I'll be like, oh, I've got to hit the middle of it. So it's something you've got to get used to. I'm mostly used to it now, but from time to time, I don't hit in the right place. So it's just something to be aware of. Something I have to bring up, just due diligence, I'm not bothered by it, but a lot of the Indiegogo backers were. I talked about back in episode 236 when I supported this in Indiegogo, they had projected a July ship date for the tick pods. They did not hit that July mark. They had some issues. They had to go back and remanufacture some stuff. That didn't bother me because generally on these Indiegogo and Kickstarter projects, we're an angel investor. The ship dates are an estimate. You don't have to hold people to it, and I generally don't. I didn't get mine until early October, I think it was. So while I was okay with that, there were some people on the Indiegogo site that were just giving them hell. I want my money back. I'm so mad these things are delayed. And they were saying we had a shipping delay. Here, go to this site. We'll explain everything that went on. So 
some people were really upset about it. And I sort of see where they might be. But again, these are some of those folks that don't realize the nature of how things like Indiegogo and Kickstarter work. And we've talked about it before. There's no guarantee you're actually going to get these things. You're, for lack of a better term, an angel investor. I'm okay with a little bit of a delay to make sure I get a good product. And I feel like I got that good product. But I had to bring that up on here because I'm sure if someone listened to this who was a backer and I didn't mention that, they'd be sending in hate mail like, what the hell? You should be really upset about the fact that they didn't get these things in in time. Not really a problem for me. Uh, Please one last send your hate mail to js at gunnageek.com. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? So uh, one last thing that's kind of a con, you just have to get used to it, is if you want to use one earbud, that's fine, but you can only use the right earbud solo. The left earbud pairs up with the right one when you have them out. So you can't just wear the left earbud and be good to go. If you put the left bud in your ear and only the left, as soon as you shut the case, it's going to disconnect because the right earbud is the master driver in this. So just something to be aware of. The only way you can do a single is in your right ear. Some people are upset by that. Other people are like, well, this is just the nature of how a lot of these Bluetooth buds work. Who cares? What if you take the left one and, and turn it upside down? That should work. I don't okay. see any reason why it wouldn't, as long as it detects that it's in your ear. And the way it detects that is just a little sensor or dot there that would be covered by your ear. So, yeah, you should be good to go. I haven't tried it. I'll try it after the show if you'd like, SP, and I can report it next week. I think that would be a wise post test to this segment. It would probably be uncomfortable though, because the way these things are shaped, they're kind of offset. I'll hold it up a little bit and you can see it's kind of offset a little bit. So it wouldn't be the most comfortable. Sorry for the blue flashing light. I'm trying to pair with my phone right now. <laughs> for the audio listeners, Chris just held up the earbud and you could see that they're meant to go in one ear or the other because the actual, the, the ear hole is offset. Right. And they are labeled distinctly left and right when you look at the back of them. So, Chris, I have to tell you, I don't care about your comfort. <laughs> That's fair. Most people don't. Most people don't. So when it comes down to it with these earbuds, would I recommend them to you? So this is me speaking as Chris Farrell. I am not being paid by these guys. I'm a customer. I love these headphones. They are the best Bluetooth headphones I've had. I would absolutely recommend them to you, especially if your preferred listening for music is with earbuds. If you're someone that likes to wear cans, get your cans, get Bluetooth cans, and you're good to go. But if you prefer to use earbuds, these are fantastic. They're comfortable. They stay in my ears for 129 bucks. They're cheaper than AirPods. They're cheaper than the Jabra. There's another company called Jabra that has an equivalent. They're at the bottom end of the price scale and they're comfortable. And one of the things that people get really upset about is I can only get my AirPods in white and I want them in different colors. Well, here's some good news for you. You can get these in three different colors. Mine are blue officially on the site that's called Navy. They also have a red set, which is called Lava on their website and a white set called Ice. So you've got three different colors to go with. Not a problem there. I think it's a really good competitor to AirPods because there are a lot of Android users who were buying AirPods because they were arguably the best Bluetooth earbuds on the market. However, they couldn't use any of the smart features to trigger Google Assist or anything like that because those are built to work really only with Apple devices in that regard. Whereas if you buy these, you can use them on any of your devices and trigger whatever your smart assistant is. I think it's an awesome thing. You can find them on Amazon right now, or you can go directly to the Mobvoi website at M-O-B-V-O-I dot com. I really like them. I'm really pleased I got them for $79. I'd be willing to pay the $129 if I was in the market for Bluetooth headphones right now. They are that comfortable and they have exceeded what I expected to get out of them. So I'm I'm really pleasantly surprised. Watch the GunnaGeek.com show live Mondays at 8.45 p.m. Eastern on Geeks.Live.